Hello there and Happy New Year! My name is Elena. And I'm Photios. And this is the Game Court. And today is finally time for the Game of the Month. And for this month we have chosen Kutna Hora. Kutna Hora is a 2 to 4 player game published by Czech Games Edition and it's uh, designed by three um, Polish uh, people, designers, which I will not really bother pronouncing the name, sorry guys. And also the art is made by another four Polish uh, guys, <laughs> or Czech guys, or because Czech games, I don't know, Polish games. Czech I mean, it is in Czech Republic, so I'd imagine they would be Czech. But anyway, I will, uh, I will most likely mispronounce the name, so I will not even bother. In Kutnahora, you look after the population of a medieval city that you try to develop by smelting a lot of silver, because after all, Kutnahora is actually a city, and I didn't know that until we actually Google mm. it. It's a city, and I think its um, main characteristic is the silver production, which I think sounds super awesome, so they got the theme from there. Uh, and you technically try to mind the ever-changing uh, economy. Kutnahora is an economic Euro game. And uh, the first thing that, uh, you know, when you open the box, the first thing that stands out is how silver and gold everything is. Uh, mainly silver. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry that I will jump to production, but I really like how everything looks. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. we've not seen it. It has this, like, sheen, like every time you, like, move it. You can see that sheen on most, most of the things have this sheen, isn't it? And the cards and the, and, the, and the tiles, the buildings. It has pretty And awesome. the coins. Yeah. It looks, it looks pretty unique. So when it comes from a production standpoint, very well done. Also from a production standpoint, and again, we haven't discussed about the game, but again, when you With open the production? The box, exactly. When you open the box, it's the first impression, right? The pieces are amazing. There are wooden pieces, but they have made this new technique yeah, that they like take recycled. recycled, and then they uh, mold it somehow, so the pieces really look like ceramic pieces, and they have some weight in them, and they look like proper, like miniature with details and everything. Very Super nice. Super idea, v isn't it? I hope most more publishers get uh, get this idea and uh, you know produce even more nice pieces for Euro games. In this ever-changing economy game, you try to manage your hand by selecting for your three turns. You select two cards for the first two turns and then one card for the last uh, turn. Uh, you do them consecutively. Uh, you play all your cards one after the other. The cool thing about the cards is that they're all constructed like playing cards, like normal playing cards, mm -hmm. and they you do have two actions per card, but you have to like kind of move it the other way around and you have the other action and then some of them do repeat. But I think it's a very cool touch and they have that sheen. Mm -hmm. And the actions themselves are quite uh, straightforward, like have the rights action, where you get a new, let's say, blueprint of a building, I would mm -hmm. say. Then you have the plot action, where you deserve a space where you're going to deploy or build your building. You of course have the build action, you have the mine action, again, where you put excavate your mine or whatever you put a mine out. Yeah. Um, we have the income action, which is very important, because with the income action, you get more money. And then you have the action of uh, contributing to the building of St. Barbara. Also, there is a joker action as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Please don't forget the action if you do mention yes. them. Yes. So there's a joker action that you can use, but you do have to lose one reputation. And it does not cost anything if you're higher up the reputation track. Mm -hmm. If you obviously do go down, you have to stop paying. But if you don't, then you don't. You have to pay one reputation. Yes. Yeah, and joker is quite important because one of the most important aspects of this game is that you manage your hand very well. Because each action, I think, presents twice, apart from the St. Barbara action. But the way you, you you play your actions, you play a card, you do one action, you lose that other action. So you have to be careful how you what play What you want it. to lose first. Exactly. Yeah. This super awesome game offers you something that we've not seen so far in any other game. As in, you only have one resource, which is money. I mean, we have seen some different things, like for example in Firenze, mm -hmm. we saw you could use the towers and the tower blocks as an exchange for everything. For everything, yes. But I think in an economic game, we've not seen it before. Um, and is in this game, you only have money as a, your currency and as your resources. And what you do is whatever you want to buy, you have to buy at the price that the market offers at that mm -hmm. point. And everything is just money and money out kind of situation, which I think is awesome. So you don't have to spend actions to get resources, like to get wood or whatever, but there are six commodities in the game that you can purchase with money. There is uh, beer, food, wood, coal, permits beer, food, and wood, silver. Good, yes. good, good, good food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'll try again. Okay. <laughs> but uh, at any point in the game you may buy these resources for the, uh, as Elena said, for the price that 
that are offered at the moment, and this price will fluctuate over the game. The prices will generally change when you build out buildings. For instance, when you build uh, a wood building, a wood production building, then this means that uh, the wood supply will be higher, so the price of the wood will be lower. Equally, when the population rises, everything will be higher in demand, so the price will be also higher. This game offers a super cool variation for two players only. It's optional for three and four, but you mm -hmm. can play them at that number as well if you want to, uh, which is uh, represented by events car event cards. Uh, and every event card gives you like quite a dramatic change every round. Yes. And I did find that at one point, you know, most event cards, they're like, meh or they're like incredibly brutal. But I think that these ones are quite dynamic mm -hmm. and they do make some dynamic changes, um, which I thought, I think in two players really made quite a difference. It makes the economy more dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And increase the taxes as well. Sometimes you don't have to pay taxes, sometimes double taxes. Taxes. Yeah. You know what, the, <laughs> the events remind me of the events of Orlean. Yeah, 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 something similar to yeah. that. So like, you know, Something not not too little, but not too harsh, but you know enough to like give the game a different kind of taste. And while the game has a very nice feature of economy and the dynamic of economy with supply and demand, there are also some Euro style puzzle elements in because the game. Because it is a Euro game, it is a Euro game, game yes. Wasn't it? And the puzzle elements of this game is uh, basically how you place your tiles out, your building tiles or the public buildings, and then also your mines. And for the for the buildings. You have to pay attention to what icons are there in the top left corner of each tile. So whatever is adjacent will give you of, of the same type of icon will give you points. Whereas for the mines, you have to create rows with the maximum stars, and if you have the majority of stars, you get the most. Get the majority of points. Also, uh, there is a little section on the main board for the patricians, mm. which are technically people that kind of help you score for the end of the game. So you can allocate these patricians if you have like a a super duper thing that gives you this extra perk or you can do it in round three four five i think in three four five you can add or four five six four, something five, six, like yes. towards the end of yes. the game you can allocate these patricians that you get from buildings mainly public buildings and you can allocate them to something that you want to work towards as a goal yeah also the game has a bit of a symmetry in the sense that each player controls different guilds oh so, yeah i think that's yeah, super cool it, yes so for instance in a two-player game we have three guilds each which basically aligns to the six commodities of the game. And if I have the guild for wood, I can only build wood buildings out and, you know, And you can yeah, manipulate that. In a four-player game, each player has... Uh, each guild is uh, it's given to two players, so two players can build wood, the other two cannot build wood, and so on so forth. In a three-player game, there is one commodity, let's say wood, that I can only build and nobody else, but the other commodities I also share with other players. So this is a bit of a symmetry in the game, and uh, I, I kind of like it. I think the game, it's not particularly replayable from the amount of pieces that it comes with, mm -hmm. but I think that it has enough dynamic in it to kind of, you know, keep you entertained. And keep you on your feet. Yeah, yes. yeah. And the, the market changes quite fast as well, even in two players. Mm -hmm. I think those event cards really make a difference. Yeah. And I think that even in two players, they do change fair, f a, a quite a fair amount. The event cards give you more variability in the game. Mm -hmm. The guilds, which guilds you have, also give some variability in the game, but as you very correctly say, this is a game with relatively low variability, so for instance, where I would like to see some extra tiles in the game is, as you said, as you mentioned, the Patricians, which gives you points for different stuff. I would like to see there more objectives, like, you know, we only have four, and this is four static objectives, so why not have extra four objectives so you can mix and match as well. Time-wise, the game plays very decently in very short time, so if for two players who know the game, it can play for approximately in an hour, and for four players it goes up to two hours, so it's not an extremely, extremely lengthy game, and equally it's not the most heavy game, it's about two, three, three point five. it's not like towards the four complexity according to BDG from one to five, that is. Is an ace? Rock, paper, scissors. Okay, you go first. Um, let me think quickly, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I won, so now I don't know what I want to say. Uh, quality and the way it's actually made with all the sheen and oh, yes. I really like that very much. I think that was the first thing that came to mind, but I've not seen this sheen anywhere and it's like it's like so well implemented everywhere in the game, mm -hmm. like on the cover, on the cards, on the pieces, everything has them. Mm -hmm. The main board has it as well. So I think it's such a cool touch and they've mm -hmm. paid attention to so many little details and not just like this little sheen that like kind of, you know, it's a theme everywhere. This silver theme like mm -hmm. travels everywhere throughout the game and I think it's so cool. I like the name of the game, the way they implemented a theme, the art, I like, I, it's super cool. My first yay would be this dynamic economy. I wanted to say that! <laughs> which I really love. It's something that, you know, as a feature of the game by itself, 
it will it will make us keep the game in our collection, I think, because something different from whatever else we have in our collection. Yes. It's something that it's really implemented well in this game, how the demand fluctuates up and down and based on what you build. And you can actually decide to not build something to force your opponents to pay something very expensive. It's pretty cool how it works. I really like it. Another yay from my side, again follows Elena's production, is this, as I mentioned before, these wooden pieces of the game which are very nice and very nice colors. Red is missing, but anyway. I know yellow is missing as well. Yeah, there's some. Some, some like, it's like, like yellow, yellow. It's not really green. I, I use mint in this game because I purple is reserved for my friend Reese. <laughs> for Reese, everybody knows who Reese is now. Yes. This is a video. It's like yes, there somewhere. My nay, no. My yay. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my yay, and I'm quite impressed with the length of play actually mm -hmm. for how long this game technically is and the complexity of it. And you know, you do so many things in the game and the satisfaction that it gives you at the end of the day, really. I think an hour is impressive. And also, I like the another yay that is, I like uh, the card play of the game. That is super it, cool, it, isn't it? It's it is very nice. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. Like it's obviously borrowed from normal cards, but isn't yes. that amazing? I really I really like And it. how they have two actions on each card. You have to very very carefully plan your actions until the end of your turn because you only take your cards at the end of your turn of the end of the round that is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it's very nice. It's a very nice aspect. Even if you know some people would say that they would like to see like a card market to let's say to buy cards to make your actions as the game progresses more uh, stronger and more impressive, like yeah, as another games, right? Like you buy some cards to. Hmm. I think that's a very good point, but I don't think I've seen the need. I've had the need when we played to actually pump up my actions because I feel that the actions are very straightforward, hmm. and unless you do like combination of actions, I think the actions are very good as they are. I don't think I don't think they need any pumping because they're very simple. They're very straightforward, very simple. Mm -hmm. My first nay, and because you wanted to say that first, I will say it first is um, from the main board that you have this module, mm -hmm. the Patricians, which I'm not particularly keen on. And that's mainly because I find that they're not particularly theme integrated. I think the game is very well integrated. I mm -hmm. like the way you produce everything you produce and they are all linked to the city. You build the city, you mm -hmm. build mines to excavate the silver and all of that. So I think that's all super duper. But then the Patricians are there literally just to give you points for the end of the game and to work towards the goal, which I can see some stuff, but I think it's a bit too yuri for my game and it's a bit too bland. Um, so I don't really like that. I didn't really pay attention to it, but it just happened that at the end I got a lot of points from it. But it's not my cup of tea. I don't like it. What I don't like about it is that you have to pay 10 coins to deploy the Patrician and that, that you do it when you take your income. And it can be the case that you deploy a Patrician and, you know, everybody then goes to score the Patrician. So basically your extra, the extra points you are gaining are very minimal in that sense. Um, make me understand. Isn't it deploying the Patrician's 10 money only if you do it earlier? It's always 10 money. It's always 10 mm. money. I thought it's only early. But if you do it early, you can score them up to three times, like in a two-player game. Okay. Whereas if you do oh, it so later... Oh, you still have to pay 10 towards... Correct. Ah, oh, well. But oh, equally, it's not that many points. I mean, from my side, is that uh, the game doesn't come with a solo mode, and most of the games nowadays come, come with solo mode, and it would be, you know, nice to have it. Not necessary, but usually, Whenever we like a game, both of us we usually play together, so I don't need solo mode for myself. But there are many, many players who play out, out there who play only solo, and it's a good game to experience. And it could be made with a, a deck of Automa cards, for instance. It would work very yeah. easy, isn't it? It I would just so. modify the market and yeah. modify stuff like that. Maybe another deck of events, a bit more aggressive for a bit more stuff happening in the city. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, solo mode is kind of expected these days, I would say. Righty, so that was it for our game of the month. We hope you enjoyed our video and thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.